one of the most common conditions we see at Southeast Veterinary Neurology is seizures. A seizure is an abnormal burst of electrical activity in the front part of the brain, what we call the cerebral cortex. A seizure tells us that there's a problem with the brain, but it doesn't tell us what the cause is. It just tells us that there is a problem with the brain, so it's a symptom of a problem within the brain. What we see on the outside when there's this abnormal electrical activity, many animals go stiff, they fall on their side, their jaws clench or their mouth opens, they may salivate, they might urinate or defecate, their limbs may paddle, and it can last anywhere from a few seconds to several minutes. Most dogs are disoriented after a seizure. They might seem blind. They might be very needy or attached to you. They might want to go outside. Every dog's different. But that tells us there's a problem in the front part of the brain. But it does not tell us what the cause is. There are lots of things that can cause a seizure. And I like to think of them in three broad categories. The first broad category is something outside of the brain that secondarily affects the brain. Some people will call these extracranial or metabolic causes. But things outside of the brain that can secondarily affect the brain to cause a seizure are things like low blood sugar. Uh, severe liver or severe kidney disease can cause a seizure. Certain electrolyte abnormalities like really, really low blood calcium can cause uh, a seizure and then toxins can cause a seizure. The second broad category of causes of seizures is something that's physically wrong inside of the brain. Some neurologists call these intracranial or structural problems within the brain. Examples of problems inside of the brain that can cause seizures include things like encephalitis or inflammation of the brain. Uh, brain tumors can cause seizures. Strokes can cause seizures. Malformations such as hydrocephalus or cysts can cause seizures. And then certain brain infections can cause seizures as well. The third broad category of causes of seizures is called idiopathic epilepsy. That's the most common cause of seizures in dogs, but it's relatively uncommon in cats. In general, idiopathic epilepsy happens or the first seizure comes on between one and five years of age. Usually their seizures are whole body or what we call generalized clonic tonic seizures. They usually have a normal exam and they're usually normal between seizures. So many times we can have a suspicion for idiopathic epilepsy based off of the age and the examination findings, but we can only know that by doing tests. What tests should we uh, consider in order to try and find the underlying cause of the seizures? The way we look outside of the brain is with things like blood tests. So a general chemistry panel and a CBC uh, can rule out many of these things. Sometimes a bile acids test is necessary to screen for a portosystemic or a liver shunt. Um, many times we perform chest x-rays and belly x-rays before we move towards moving and looking inside of the brain. So most of these things can be diagnosed with simple blood tests and or x-rays. The way we look inside of the brain is with an MRI. Typically, CAT scans are not sensitive enough to determine the cause of seizures and should not be performed to evaluate dogs, with, and, dogs and cats with seizures. The best way for us to see inside of the brain and diagnose things like encephalitis, brain tumors, strokes, meningitis, malformations, etc., is by doing an MRI of the head. Many times, a CSF analysis is used after the MRI to help give us more information. Occasionally, extra blood tests to look for certain infections may be necessary after the MRI. Or for example, if we were to find a, um, a stroke, we would look for underlying causes of stroke. The only way that we can truly diagnose idiopathic epilepsy is by ruling out all of these other causes. So it's what we call a diagnosis of exclusion. So a dog that we rule out blood, um, things outside of the brain with blood tests and things inside of the brain with an MRI and spinal tap, we often diagnose with idiopathic epilepsy. When should tests be considered? So 
certain animals are more likely, or certain breeds and certain ages are more likely to have things outside of the brain or things inside of the brain. If we've said that dogs with idiopathic epilepsy are usually between one and five years of age when they have their first seizure, for instance, a six-month-old dog, we should be thinking of these things and would be more likely to be doing tests. Similarly, a 12-year-old dog with recent onset seizures is less likely to be idiopathic epilepsy and we're more likely to recommend ruling things out with blood tests and an MRI. Similarly, animals that have an abnormal neurological examination. So dogs with brain disease may seem confused. They might be bumping into things. They might be walking in circles. They might uh, be weak on one side of the body. And those are all things that raise the suspicion for something inside of the brain. Again, another reason that we should consider further tests. And then lastly, certain breeds of dogs. Um, even if they're between one and five years of age and have a normal exam, Dogs like French Bulldogs and Maltese and Chihuahuas are just more likely to have a physical structural problem inside of the brain and warrant pursuing an MRI. So let's say your pet has had a seizure. Um, when is it an emergency? When, are, when should you take your dog into the veterinarian if they've had a seizure? Well, certainly the first time your dog has a seizure should certainly be evaluated. But let's say your dog's had seizures and we've already come to a diagnosis or we strongly suspect epilepsy. In general, seizures lasting longer than three minutes or multiple seizures in one day are an emergency. So most dogs don't die during a seizure. That's a common question that owners ask me of what's the likelihood of me going home, coming back, and finding my dog has passed away. And usually that's uncommon. So you don't need to run to the emergency hospital or to your veterinarian every single time that your dog has a seizure. But again, if it's a long seizure, longer than three minutes, or if there are multiple seizures in 24 hours, those are the times that we do run into problems and you should certainly see your veterinarian an emergency hospital or a veterinary neurologist. Treatment of seizures, you can kind of break them into two main treatment categories. The drugs and the treatment that we do when a dog is actively having a seizure and then the maintenance drugs, the drugs that we use kind of in the longer term. Emergency drugs are drugs like Valium or, and Midazolam and those are drugs that either your veterinarian gives intravenous, intravenously when you bring your dog to uh, to the veterinarian, um, or even sometimes at home we can prescribe intranasal or uh, rectal Valium um, or intranasal midazolam to be used in an emergency situation to stop that seizure that's happening right then. These medications don't stick around for a long time, so without other medications the seizures may come back. Maintenance drugs are longer acting drugs. So they're given every single day or sometimes two to three times a day to make it less likely that your dog or cat has further seizures. So that brings up the, the, the next um, point of what the reasonable goals and expectations are. Many people come here expecting that I'm just going to give them a medication and their dog's never going to have a seizure again. And usually that's not our realistic goal. It certainly is our goal and occasionally that happens, but the vast majority of pets with seizures, regardless of the underlying cause, are going to have more seizures. Our ability to treat those seizures comes down to finding out which one of the underlying causes it is, and by tr giving medications specifically for that condition to decrease the likelihood of a seizure, the severity of the seizure, the duration of the seizure, and try and avoid these sorts of things where we end up with long seizures or multiple seizures, the things that make you end up having to go into the emergency clinic in the middle of the night. So again, we do not expect to stop all seizures when we start these medications. We expect to decrease how often they happen, how severe they are, and how long each one lasts. Going back to the maintenance drugs, there are several different maintenance drugs that we use here at Southeast Veterinary Neurology. We use medications like levetiracetam, phenobarbital, um, zanisamide, potassium bromide. There are others, but those are kind of the foremost common that we use here.